Hi, this video looks at intellectual property and the different types of intellectual property uh, and we're down here now on the specification. So uh, intellectual property we could say are the ideas and concepts that are generated by an organisation or I guess it would be more accurate to say the employees or the workers within that organisation. So um, these could be ideas for new products or product innovation, so taking an existing product and enhancing it in some way. Um, this could be an idea for an entirely new process, a way of manufacturing something or um, a way of producing a particular product. <clears throat> or it could be um, and a development on an existing process that makes it better. Um, it could be creative ideas like marketing ideas or logos or brand names. Okay, ideas that the business comes up with in order to um, promote its product. Or it could be um, artistic creations um, that um, an organisation owns. So publishing houses and so on or record companies. Um, all of these are examples of intellectual properties, basically ideas that the organisation has come up with. Um, and organisations will want some way to protect these ideas. Um, you know, it's, it, it's funny to think of ideas as, as kind of like property, you know, that's my idea. But if anyone, if anyone in your class has ever copied your work, you know, you'll know how annoying it is when people do that. And it's the same for businesses. If they've come up with an idea, they want to be able to protect that idea. Um, and there are various different ways of doing that um, and various different types of intellectual property that can be used to um, protect these ideas. So the first uh, form of protection for intellectual property is called a patent. And this is a license that's granted by the government and it gives the holder ex the exclusive right to produce a particular product or undertake a specific process. So patents are used to protect ideas for products or ideas for, for, for processes. And once the uh, patent is given, it licenses that individual or that company to produce that product um, and nobody else is allowed to, or nobody else is allowed to use that particular process. So it protects the unique features of a design for a particular product or process. So how does it actually work? Well, uh, the inventor of an idea needs to submit a plan to the UK IPO, UK Intellectual Property Office, and they need to demonstrate the unique features of their idea. So they need to clearly label what it is. They need to clearly hand in a plan that shows what is unique about their design. What, is, what are the unique features that they're looking to protect? What makes their idea uh, special? And then the UK Intellectual Property Office will consider their um, their proposal and if the uh, patent is granted it allows the holder a monopoly over the use or production of that idea okay nobody else can do it uh, and the patent lasts for 20 years so they've got a monopoly now for 20 years um, uh, and no one else can use that idea however the patent itself the idea itself can be sold it can be rented it can be licensed and so it can be a uh, form of income for somebody okay you can license somebody else to use uh, to produce that product and they, they pay you in return um, and often um, patents are uh, a source of competitive advantage and and will be a reason for uh, taking over a particular business you want to gain their patent um, another form of uh, protection of intellectual property is a trademark um, a logo, a word or symbol that's used to represent a, a brand. So a trademark is the symbol that's used to represent a brand and we're surrounded by trademarks. Um, you'll see lots and lots of them, uh, particularly on packaging of products, etc. Or uh, whenever you see a logo, a slogan. Um, and a trademark is unique to a company and the design or brand so what, what does it protect? It protects that kind of design. So here I've got the Under Armour um, uh, symbol here, which you can see has got the little registered trademark, the R next to it, and the, and the brand name Under Armour is equally protected. So you've got the brand name, you've got the um, 
uh, symbol, the, the uh, logo uh, as well that is also protected. And you can, you can also protect things like the font that you've used and the way the uh, design of the brand is laid out. Um, so how does it work? Well, you need to apply for a trademark again at the UK Intellectual Property Office. And once that trademark is registered, and once it's registered, you get this little R symbol to put next to it. Nobody else can then use that design and you are protected legally uh, against that. Um, and the final form of protection that you need to know about is copyright. Um, it's a form of legal protection that prevents others from copying the artistic work of writers, artists and musicians. So what it protects is it protects music, it protects literature, it protects uh, like performances, um, you know, particularly adverts, things like that. Um, artistic works, basically, are what copyright present and it's it, it, copyright is a little bit different to kind of trademarks and, and patents you don't need to apply for it but when a piece of music art or literature is produced the uh, material is automatically legally protected and there's no need to apply for copyright uh, but once it's out there once it's in the in the um, kind of public domain um, you th that work is your own okay and it can be copyrighted, it, it can be copied or adapted for a fee. So, you know, we see this with musicians a lot, you know, once they release uh, some music, once it's released uh, that, you know, particular arrangement of notes and beats becomes their copyrighted work and people can, um, uh, you know, pay to use that in other songs. And here's an example of where you might see some copyright on an album. Um, the P is another form of copyright for music, but you can see it there. The copyright in the sound recording and artwork is owned by Mumford and Sons. So uh, there's an example of copyright. So you need to know these three different forms of protection and what each one protects. And I'll have a look at the advantages and disadvantages in the next video.